We're going to talk a little bit about interview skills today. My name is Neil. I'm with Inside the League. All right, so what are scouts looking for? Number one, I could put honesty as just one page by itself. All they want is for you to be forthright and straightforward with them and tell the truth and be willing to explain anything that happens. If you had something in your background, they understand. You guys go through stuff. You're college kids. No one expects you to be perfect. But if you're honest about things and accountable as well and you admit that you did, did things and messed up or whatever, but you won't do it again, you'll be fine. I'm not even saying y'all did, but if you have anything in your background that came up, suspension, had a fight with your coach, arrest, whatever, just be, be real about it, be upright about it, be stand up about it, and you'll be fine, okay? That's the main thing that scouts want to see. They want you to feel comfortable. They want to feel comfortable around you. They want you to feel like you can talk to people that are kind of in authority, that you're not going to feel threatened or nervous or whatever. Just sitting like what we're doing right now is fine. You know, if you're antsy and nervous and looking all around and that kind of stuff, that's going to come across negatively to them. So just be comfortable and just, be able to just do what you do and you'll be fine. Love of the game is a big one, and we'll cover this a little bit more as we go forward, but they want to know that, they want to understand that you like football, that you're not just doing this because it's a paycheck or people tell you you should do it or you're good at it, so you guess you'll do. They want you to feel like this is a passion for you and something that really matters to you, okay? Understanding of basic football concepts, we'll cover that a little bit more as we go forward, but that's something that's gonna come up and we'll talk about specifically how it comes up. Sense of teamwork is pretty self-explanatory. They wanna make sure you're not some kind of prima donna who's only in it for yourself, doesn't care about anything else, you just wanna get your stats and go home. Intelligence, again, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, they just wanna make sure you can learn the playbook, that you have some sense of what's going on, you know how, how the game works. Toughness, again, that's kind of a core value of football, and that's something they'll kind of try to get from you when they're having, having their discussions with you. And then finally, learning quickly, and they're gonna have a lot of different metrics that'll kind of measure how quickly you can learn. And of course, they've talked to your coaches and they'll know a lot about that as well, all right? <clears throat> so let's talk about kind of how interviewers will typically approach you and how they're gonna conduct an interview. Number one, I spoke to uh, Ryan Reichert, he used to be the security guy for the Texans, and he would conduct all their interviews and kind of run things. And he said that one thing the teams want to do is they want to create a back and forth, they want to have a conversation with you. They don't want to just be me asking you questions and you saying yes or no or maybe or whatever. They want you to feel comfortable talking, they want to hear you talk, they want to be able to kind of say, okay, well that's interesting, how about this or how about that? They want it to be more of a a dialogue rather than them just saying something to you and then you say yes or no or whatever and just kind of acting like a bump on a log. So try to be comfortable and casual and talk to them in a manner like you would just with a buddy or whatever. I mean, at the end of the day, you're football guys, you're just talking about football and just talking about your lives, all right? Uh, second thing, a lot of times if they want to get you off balance, and some teams will want to get you off balance, They'll hit you with some light stuff first. Yeah, you got a girlfriend, what's her name? Where are you from? Oh yeah, I'm from there. And they'll come back with, hey, I heard the, the coach said this about you. What do you how, what's your response to that? And they try to get you to maybe feel a little defensive and a little uncomfortable and not sure and quite, not, not quite knowing exactly what you want to say. And then they'll come back with, so I mean, hey, tell me about, more about that girlfriend. So what, what kind of chick do you like or whatever? Then they might they bounce back to hard stuff again. So be prepared for that if they do because they, they're, isn't necessarily one way they're going to do it every time. Different teams vary in how they do it and what the environment is and all those kinds of things. All right, third thing, some will, want to, will come right at you. They won't start with the girlfriend stuff or where you're from and hey, you know, why did you decide to go to that school or whatever. They'll come right at you with, hey, um, I saw you got suspended once. How? How can you expect to play in the NFL if you got suspended? You got arrested for this. You failed this test. How come? You, your grades were very poor. Why is that? They're going to come right at you and want to put you on the defensive immediately. So be prepared for whatever approach a team takes because they're not all going to be the same. And you're going to be interviewing with probably, I'm guessing, a dozen to 15, 16 teams each. So there, will be a lot, there may be a lot of different methods that are used by teams as you go through this. All right. All right, so I'm going to cover some popular questions. They're all kind of in a different group, and they all kind of try to measure different things. A lot of these questions were taken directly from scouts that I've spoken to and I've heard them ask of players. Number one, people say I am this, but I really am this, all right? 
they're getting, they're wanting you more to talk about who you are and get into your psychology and how you think about yourself and how you see others thinking about you, all right? What's the worst thing you ever got away with? The Ravens will probably ask you this question if you interview with them, all right? That's a kind of a favorite question that their owner likes to ask. He says, because that's a way to kind of find out if you got in trouble and they didn't even know, all right? What drives you to play? I got a scout from the Browns who said that's the question he likes to ask because he wants to know what's in your heart. He wants to know if you're really interested in this game. He wants to know if succeeding is something that really matters to you or if you're just kind of going through the motions and just making it happen whatever way you can, all right? So I expect you'll get that question from more than one team. And then finally, this is a weird one. This was on a questionnaire that I saw once that players got, but if you're driving on the highway, would you rather be at the front of a pack of cars, in the middle, or towards the back? Right there, they're looking, it's a weird way of asking, do you want to be a leader? Are you willing to be out in front? Are you willing to be outspoken if you need to? Are you willing to kind of direct people if you don't feel like they're hustling or giving their all? Are they screwing up somehow? All right? So those are all questions. They're kind of looking at your psyche with those questions. All right, so background. These are all really pretty standard. I think you're going to get these from virtually every team. What do your mom and dad do? Uh, what do your siblings do? What sports do they play? They're trying to find out if you come from an athletic line, if your family's athletic, because that's something that teams really obsess over. Are you an athlete? And do you have those bloodlines that you, nest, that you need? Um, maybe your parents have been in legal scrapes. There have been parents that have been in jail, okay? They kind of want to know a little bit about that, just know what the situation is, where they are, you know, what, what, the, what, the whole, their whole, what the landscape is there. Who are the influences in your life? I expect every team's going to ask you this. They're going to be looking for a coach. They may be looking for a teacher, maybe an uncle, maybe a stepfather, maybe your parents, you know? Again, these aren't questions that are going to trip you up. I just want you to expect to hear them. And they're just questions that you can answer that anyone would ask you, and you just answer them normally. Same deal, do you have a role model? Who is it? Kind of along the same lines of the influences. Serious girlfriends and kids. If you've got kids, they're going to want to know that. That's a pretty standard question as well. And then who's your agent, and, wh and who else does he represent in this class? This is another kind of a icebreaker, because they don't really care who your agent is. They're never going to mark off on you because you have a certain agent. They just kind of want to know who else is, is kind of working with you and that you may know. Y'all got any questions so far? <clears throat> Trey? No, sir. Okay. All right, so these are more team related. I had a Texan scout who was going to come today and do this for you, and I, he wasn't able to make it, but this is something you're going to see. Drop your favorite play and give us the terminology on it. So they may put you on the whiteboard and say, hey, man, this is what, where did you feel, when you, when you ran this play, you always scored, or you always got yardage, you always did this or did that. And as running backs, that's something that's going to be important to them. Now, here's another trick they may pull. They may come up to the whiteboard and say, hey, this is, you know, Gus, this is the offense we run. We like to run out of this formation. We like to run twins here, and we like to do this. Sometimes we'll put a guy in the backfield here. Sometimes we'll run it out of the shotgun. Sometimes we'll run it out of the pistol. We'll do all these things, and they'll mark the board up really well. Then they'll erase the board and say, could you please draw that again? That's one of the tricks that they'll do. So be prepared for that. That's a biggie. So when they, what they're trying to find out is, number one, do you have football intelligence? And number two, are you paying attention? Because that will catch you with your pants down if you're not ready for it. So if you go into an interview room and they've got a whiteboard, <laughs> expect that to happen, all right? Because that's probably why. That's a real big trick that they use, and a very common one. Probably more than one team will do it. Now, if y'all were quarterbacks, guaranteed it would happen. But as running backs, it's probably gonna happen as well. So when they're drawing all that stuff up there, Make sure you're paying attention, because they're probably going to want you to duplicate it, all right? Okay, who do you model your play after, and who does your game resemble? They want to kind of know, I think, at this point, whether you really follow football, you really care about it, you really know about it. Do you ever watch NFL Network? I mean, that stuff isn't necessarily going to be a deal breaker, but they want to, again, they kind of want to know if you actually like the game, if you follow the game, if it's something you're comfortable with. Who's your best teammate, and who's the most athletic guy on your team? Quite frankly, guys, they're doing a little scouting for 2016 when they ask these questions. They just want to kind of know who else they need to be looking at. So these are harmless questions, but they may ask you these questions. They're not uncommon to hear. And then finally, injury history. I mean, that's a pretty important one. Um, you're going to spend all day in the hospital next week, and they're going to check everything that's ever, you know, every one of your moving parts. They're going to poke everything. They're going to find out everything that's ever happened to you from the x-rays and from all that kind of stuff but they still want to hear about it. They're still going to ask you. 
There's gonna be a lot of times when they ask you questions they've already asked you or that other teams have asked you or doctors have asked you. Try to be as patient as you can and just try to answer them, you know, the same way every time. Just be honest and forthright and you'll be fine, all right? Now there's one question I don't have one here that I need to include. I was talking to uh, a scout on the way when I was driving over here. He said, the last question they're always gonna ask you is, is there anything we don't know about that we should know about? Anything that's happened to you that we haven't discussed? If they do ask that, make sure you say. Because teams want, if they, because they're gonna find out eventually. Everyone that goes to the combine is gonna, has to sign a release that allows them to do a background check in your college town and your hometown, all right? So one way or another, if something happened, they're gonna find out about it. And if, if they ask you, hey, is there anything else, and you say nothing, and then they find out before the draft that there was something, that's not gonna be good. So be as honest as you can. Again, the important thing here, guys, is they understand you're gonna make mistakes. They understand you're young men. They understand you have stuff in front of you all the time. Sometimes you mess up. They just want you to want to know that you accept that and that you learn from it. That's all that matters, all right? So remember that at all times. All right, so let's talk about some philosophies that some teams have and how they kind of come at you and how they approach the interview process. The first one I'll call adversarial. You're seeing it less, but I want y'all to be prepared for it when you go in. That's usually where they're, when they find it, when they feel like you're a guy who's got a lot of red flags in your, back, in your background and they want to come at you and they want to make you feel uncomfortable and they want to get you off your stride to where you start making excuses or acting defensive or being less than honest. Because right off the bat, that's the kind of thing that will take you off a team's board. If you're dishonest or if they feel like that you're trying to manipulate them or trying to get around the truth. They also want to find out if you got mental toughness. They may, they, they're already going to know all the answers to the questions they're asking you, but they want to find out how you handle it. Are you willing to say, I did this, I won't do it again, and I've learned from it, and look them in the eye and be straight with them? Or are you going to kind of try to duck and dodge and squirm and not you know, do the things that you would normally do if you felt honest and felt comfortable? And, like I, and as I alluded to earlier, this is mostly common with guys that have you know, had all kinds of run-ins with the police. They've been all over the newspapers. Everybody knows they've got issues. Those are the guys you're gonna come at. I don't think that, I don't think you guys qualify for that, so don't worry about it too much. So you, you said you got arrested today. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll erase that, man. <laughs> all right, so good cop, bad cop. This one's not uncommon. I don't know if you'll see this or not next week, but you, everybody kind of knows this from seeing movies and stuff. It's going to be some guy that's trying to help you out and seems like he's on your side and then one guy that really wants to be a chump and really get after you. Uh, this one is probably going to be more common when they don't know as much about you and haven't done as much research. I think it probably qualifies that most players are coming to the combine they've already done a lot of research on you, but I want to include this just in case because it may be something you see. Usually the younger scouts are going to be the bad cop, they're going to come at you, and the, bad, and the good cop is the guy with the gray hair who's more of like an elderly uh, uncle kind of type, and he wants to give you the benefit of the doubt. They're both, just remember, they're both working on the same, same side, trying to get the same amount of information out of you. So don't be tripped up by that. Don't, be, don't feel uncomfortable if that situation arises for you. The last one I think is a lot more common because at this point, like I say, they know most of the answers to the questions that they have for you, but they, want to find, but they want you to be completely at ease so that you're willing to have that conversation with them. And I call this style best friend. They're pro I know that there's one scout that I've spoken to who's in the AFC. The first thing he's gonna ask you when he has an interview with you one-on-one -on -one is what kind of questions do you have for me? And you may have a question like what I need to do to get in the league or you know, why are we having this interview or what if this or what if that? And, he, and his whole idea is he wants you to be completely comfortable and not have any nervousness about you so that he can have an honest, open discussion with you. I think it's a good way to go about it. You're definitely gonna see that next week because there's a lot of teams that that's just, they want to have that open discussion. It's the banner thing that we talked about where they wanna make it something where they kinda go back and forth with you rather than you're just sitting there answering questions with one word, okay? So calm, easy manner, lots of smiles, lots of things that kind of put you at ease. Uh, he will be on your, he'll seem to be on your side. He probably will be on your side. He wants to give you the benefit of the doubt. 
at the same time, understand that it is, this is a job interview. So, you know, no one's gonna go out there and say, oh, hey, we gotta take Trey and Gus no matter what. They're, at the end of the day, they're gonna take a positive or negative from your interview. So just continue to be professional, be forward, be straight, you know, do all those things that, that you know are important for any kind of an interview setting. All right, so do this. We're gonna do do this and do, don't do this. Firm handshake, I mean, I think that's pretty, probably pretty self-explanatory. Everyone does that. Basics. Basics, exactly. Look them straight in the eye. That's really important, because everybody wants you to look them in the eye. You guys have both been looking me in the eye the whole time we've been here. That's cool, y'all got that down already, all right? Be comfortable, but try not to move a whole lot, because they're gonna read that as you're hiding something and you don't feel comfortable and there's something wrong and, you're, and they're gonna have to try to get it out of you. So if you guys just sit like you're doing right now, comfortable, up in your chair, not moving around a whole lot, you're fine, okay? Be, here's one that I always, I'm real bad at, I, I tend to talk really fast. If they see you talking really fast, they're gonna think that you're nervous and they're gonna read that as a key that you're hiding something. So try to be slow, be patient, don't get in a hurry. Try to remind yourself, hey, just be relaxed about this, just be, you know, don't get into a hurry. Don't feel like, hey, this is a race or anything. You'll be fine. Be honest, be forthright, but if they don't seem interested about stuff, don't feel like you gotta go into every detail. Some guys, I might even mark that off if you're going into way too much detail. You know, if you, got, if you had, had trouble somewhere, tell them what happened, tell them what the situation was, tell them what you learned from it, move on. And then find, the last thing is, Presume that they know the answers to the questions they're asking you, because they probably do. They're looking for how you react and how you express yourself and what you say and the words you use and all those kinds of things. So don't hide is what I'm trying to say. There's gonna be, one way or another, they're gonna find out about it sometime between now and the draft if they don't already. So just be as honest as you can. All right, so last one, last frame. I'll, I just call this don't do this, all right? Don't stare into space or avoid eye contact. Like I said, y'all been good with that. Don't slump in your chair. You know, don't slit, sit like this. I mean, you're not on the beach. <sighs> don't speak unclearly or mumble. That's a biggie. People want to make sure that you're going to actually talk and say what you mean. If you mumble, then this could be like, again, like you're trying to hide something. And that's you know, been the whole theme. Don't be defensive. Look, if y'all screwed up or something, don't act like, hey, they said this, that's not what happened, whatever. Just be, make it into a non-issue. Say, hey look, I made a mistake. I shouldn't have done it, it's over with. I won't do it again. But don't do the thing where, yeah, well this guy's a bad guy. He shouldn't have said that, he didn't like me. You know, it was false, it was BS, whatever. If you do that too much, then it'll add up and it'll come off negatively for you, all right? Um, that kind of goes with avoiding blame or accountability, as we discussed. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that if you did something that they ask you about, just say, hey, I messed up. And if nothing else, leave it at that. But don't say, uh, that, was, that was wrong, that, was, you know, that didn't happen. Now, if there's, a general, if there's a legitimate reason why it wasn't true or it was a misunderstanding or something, explain that. But if you, if you messed up, just say, hey, I messed up. No one's, again, no one's looking at you, you guys don't have to be angels to play in the NFL, all right? And then the final thing, final thing be engaged. Don't be disinterested or passive. You know, act like you want to be there. Act like this is an awesome opportunity for you. Act like this is a dream for you. It'll come through in your body language and your manner and the way you project yourself. I think if, so just make sure you're focused and paying attention. I think it'll take care of itself.